As we enter the month of December, a busy month of fixtures ahead in the Premier League, including the small matter of a Merseyside derby. Will it be Liverpool or will it be Everton? We'll talk about that next. That's right, folks, back once again with another prediction video. This time we're taking a look at match number 15 out in the Premier League. And we'll get to that in just one second. If you're new to the channel, smash the old subscribe button to keep your bag up to date with all things Papa Rose related, Premier League related, world football related, but all here under one Ruski. Now let's get take a look at how you guys got on and both me at uh, the last round of predictions. Okay, folks, let's take a look at uh, those matches that uh, took place last time out this past weekend. Uh, before we get to that, let's take a look at the, gra the grading criteria I judge both you and me by uh, each and every week. So if you get 0 to 3, you're in the shit face gang, which is the red face club. Uh, then you're, if you get 4 to 6, you're in the straight face gang. Uh, then if you're in 7 plus, you're in the top banana. I can reveal today we have no top bananas because the, the results were that all over the place. Uh, and unexpected. So let's kick it all off with the first game of the weekend, which was Newcastle United up against Manchester City. Four goal thriller in the end, and I actually saw four goals in it for myself. Um, I actually give it to Manchester City in the end with a 3 1 win, but uh, the Geordies had uh, other plans up their, up their sleeve. It was a 2 2 draw in the end, so I got that one absolutely wrong. I got the next one wrong as well because I went with a 2 0 win for Burnley. Uh, in fact, it was a 2 0 win going the other way for Crystal Palace in the end. So uh, uh, two incorrect pr predictions on the spin. Uh, and let me tell you this now that, that trend is going to continue into the next one. Chelsea lost at home at Stamford Bridge to West Ham United. 1 0 win. Big win for West Ham in the end. I actually went with a 3-0 win myself for Chelsea on this one. Uh, moving over to Anfield, and this was a business as usual. Well, it might have been a little bit nervy at the end as uh, as uh, Liverpool tried to hang on tight. 2-1 win in the end over Brighton at Anfield. 4-0 for me. Uh, yep, yeah, a little bit extreme with the goals, but ultimately I went the right way. And Spurs continue their revival under Mourinho with a 3-2 victory at the new, whatever they call it, Fancy Pants new stadium. 3-2 win. Again, touch and go in the end. Um, I actually went with a 2-0 win for Spurs. Uh, moving on to Southampton. Massive win for them 2-1 win over Watford in a game that cost what is this Garcia his job he's out on his ear so Watford looking for their third manager this season already is it time for Sam Allardyce this Sam Allardyce effect will he come in and take over Watford we'll have to wait and see uh, I actually went with a 1-1 draw in this one so just one goal shy meanwhile Norwich uh, pulled up a bit of a, an okay result for them a bit of a, a bit of a slip up maybe for Arsenal 2-2 in the end and again I was actually looking like it was going all the way for Norwich uh, I actually went with a 2-1 win myself so just one goal shy uh, moving on to what, uh, down at Molyneux, it was a 1 1 draw between Wolves and Sheffield United. Both sides around about the same place in the table. Actually, with a 3 2 win for Wolves on this one. So, got that one wrong as well. And Leicester, again, kept it very, very late. I think maybe VAR was VAR involved in that one. 2 1 win over Everton. Could that cost, what's his name? Mario Silva, his job. We'll have to wait and see. 2 1 in the end for Leicester City. Actually, with a 3 1 win. And Manchester United could only muster a 2 2 draw up against Manchester United in the end. Actually, with a 3 0 win in the end um, so that's our look at how I got on how about you guys how did you guys get on well I first and foremost I was in the shit face gang that's right so yep yeah. Uh, enjoy all that as, as you like. So, uh, so let's go through these guys. Shane O'Donnell, not too shabby. Joel Cook, you're in the shit face gang alongside me, as is Samara Shamas and Vincent Hung and Raphael Jarrett, all in the shit face gang. C kind of picks up a little bit in the old middle of the park here with Yannick Bustler, John Kedwood, Omaji Mondays, and LG and Cow, all in the straight face gang, so not too shabby indeed. Scotty Boy, though, joins us in the shit face gang, as does, well, Noko Drink actually pulls himself out of it uh, with a straight face gang as well. With a not too shabby uh, prediction for this week, this weekend. You, you okay, lad? Uh, he's in the shit face gang as well. Chasheng, Love, Stacy Coho, and Shepard all make it in the straight face gang as well. Kicking on forward to Kamarski, VGK, not too shabby. Luciano Matalotti, you're in the shit face gang. Sorry, sorry to hear that, Chaff, uh, Chaparuni. Uh, Tharo and the Aston Villa Seal also in the straight face club. Rex Moses, Ultra Omamura, and Chila also in the shit face gang. And Anxiety Neon, you actually buck the trend with a, a straight face club moving on to the next batch we are QPR and Shurish Limbu in the shit face gang uh, Roberto Hollis uh, Brenda Show Jim Marcos and Billy Spencer all not too shabby indeed so give yourselves a bit of a small pat on the back I kick it off further so Dominic Thomas he's in the shit face in the straight face gang Denzel Tan not too shabby Nathan Heber well done for you straight face gang DFDF you're actually doing in the shit face gang Frank Jaros not too shabby as is 
what's this guy's name? Thapa Ramus, not too shabby as well. Samuel Severus and Lordy Glindron, you're also in the shit face club. Byron Smith, uh, Rajat Kaur, the Italian devil. Okay, he did okay. Holo Vlogs, not too shabby. And Russell Frost, alongside Christian, also did not too shabby indeed. So we give you guys, guys a small pat on the back after that one. Let's kick it on and take a look at what the table looks like right here, right now. Liverpool lead the way with 40 points on the board. Leicester City are in second with 32. Manchester City are third. Um, Chelsea are now in fourth. Spurs up to fifth. Uh, down at the bottom is Watford, managerless Watford, Norwich and Southampton going down as it stands. Heverton keeping their heads above water. Uh, moving on to this round of matches, let's take a little look, shall we? It's all going to kick off, obviously, midweek games galore. Uh, kick it off on Tuesday. It'll be Crystal Palace up against Bournemouth. Now, again, I'm on the road or actually on sea right now. So I can't give you all the bells and whistles here, but I'm going to kind of give you a little bit of a lowdown. So Crystal Palace against Bournemouth, they played each other a few times over the past six, um, few, well, few years. Uh, two wins for Crystal Palace, one win for Bournemouth, three draws along the way. Uh, Bournemouth do come into this, sitting in 12th spot. Crystal Palace are placed above them, and they've also got a wing to boot most recently. Uh, Bournemouth, three defeats on the spin. The bookmakers, they go 11-10 for Crystal Palace, 5-2 the draw, 5-2 the away win. So what does that mean? Well, I'm actually going to go with uh, Crystal Palace on this one with a 2-1 win and that win could potentially where would that shoot them up uh, that was could potentially shoot them up to as high as fifth in the table above Mourinho's Spurs uh, next up what do we have on the shop sh uh, on, on the shop floor this time it is those six-figured freakazoids up against Manchester City now I see Manchester City actually have had a, had a bit of a bumpy patch of late um, just the one winner of the past three matches a draw and a defeat in that cluster as well Burnley on the flip side they're smack dab in mid-table with uh, four defeats of the past six. Um, it's not been great for Burnley. You know, they're just sitting in, the, in that middle of the road. Um, they could get sucked into relegation zone, but I just don't see it happening. The last six, though, between themselves and Manchester City have been zero wins for Burnley, five wins for Man City and one draw. That draw was back in 2018. Uh, can I tell you the goal scorers? I cannot tell you the goal scorers. Hopefully, they're going to blip up the old error here. 40-1 uh, to one for Burnley to win this one. 92 on for Manchester City. 5-1. to one. The draw! Um, yeah, you can't, you cannot bet. I know Manchester City have had a bit of a blip and Burnley are just, you're just keeping themselves above water. Pretty even, Stevens with their goal scored, goals against and all that kind of good stuff. But I can't see anything but a Manchester City victory, despite that little blip this past weekend. So I'm going to go with a 3-1 away win for Manchester City. Leicester just keep their heads, they just keep on moving as well, sitting in second at the table. They're taking on Watford this past week. So it's second up against bottom. Uh, Watford do need to get some wins in the belt, whether it's a new manager or not. Whoever's going to be leading the charge into this midweek match has got a double header this week. So a chance potentially to get themselves out of the drop zone if they were to string two results together. But up against the uh, unstoppable machine that is Leicester. Now the last uh, six games between the two sides in all competitions and all venues has been three wins for Leicester, three wins for Watford uh, and this match last season ended up as a 2-0 win for Leicester so City. That's right. Um, and the bookmakers odds coming into this they go with a 11-4 on for Leicester City. 15-2 to two, uh, the away win. 4-1 to one, the draw. A win for Watford. Could see them go just into 19th spot. Win for Leicester could close the gap between themselves and Liverpool to maybe, what, uh, five points, perhaps? Depending on what goes on between them, uh, Liverpool and um, who they are. They're playing uh, Everton in, in, in the Merseyside derby. Um, so for me, going to go with Leicester again on this one. They've been looking good. 2-0 win in the end at the, is it the City Ground. We're going to go with a 2-0 win for Leicester. Next up, we have Wolves against um, West Ham. The battle of the Ws. Now, these two sides duking it out um, just six times over the past nine seasons. Uh, the last time that they did, they did did duke it out over at Molyneux. It was a 3-0 win for Wolves, and that was last season. Uh, bookmakers odds on this one. They go with a 78-100 to 100, uh, on for Wolves. 18-5 the away win, and 27-10 the draw. Well, West Ham come into this now on the move after their big fat victory against uh, Chelsea up to 13th at the table. A win for them could seem to go up to 7th. Uh, Molyneux, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Wolves currently sit in 6th spot, and a win for, a win for them could see them jump to 5th in the table uh form book wise or uh, wolves unbeaten in six west ham uh two defeats at six it's not too bad so, sorry sorry scrap that i was looking at somebody else there uh just the one win and a four for them and actually three defeats in the last four as well in fact stretched it up a bit one win in six um and uh, four defeats in six as well so not great form for uh, for west ham 
Uh, but for me, what am I going to go with on this one? I'm actually going to go with a 2-1 win for Wolverhampton Wanderers. Next up, we have, Ma oh, well, probably a cracker. What a cracking midweek game we got here. We have Manchester United up against uh, Jose Mourinho's Tottenham. Yes, this is a bit of a belter. Uh, these two sides duking it out in the past few seasons. Four wins for United, two wins for Tottenham. This match last season ended up as a 3-0 away win for Tottenham Hotspur. That's right. I think Poch Pochettino was in charge for Spurs. Mourinho was in charge for Manchester United. Oh, oh, oh my word. How times have changed. That's Mourinho in charge of Tottenham and Solskjaer in charge of Manchester United. Uh, coming into this, though, Spurs are on the rise. Two wins out of two. Unbe uh, just the one defeat out of the past six. Uh, Manchester United are into ninth spot. Uh, two wins out of the past six. Uh, one defeat in that cluster as well. Um, so it's, it's looking ominous. Uh, the bookmakers also on this one 13 to 8 for Manchester United, 8 to 5 for Tottenham, 5 to 2. The draw. We'll have a little look, shall we? I'm going to go with a cheeky, or should I say, quite an ambitious five goal thriller in this one, going in favour of Tottenham Hotspur with a 3 2 win in the end. What else have I got moving on? Uh, we're taking a look at uh, Chelsea up against Aston Villa down at Stamford Bridge. Uh, now, these two sides have duked out a few times. We'll take a look at that in just a second. But Chelsea against Villa, 27 now, 100 on for Chelsea, 10 to 1, the Aston Villa victory, 24 to 5. Uh, the away win. Uh, Chelsea come into this in, uh, where are they in the table these days? Up to fourth still. It'll win for them because the leapfrog Manchester City into th third, but they'll have to have a huge goal swing if that's going to happen. As, as for Aston Villa, they sit in, uh, where are they? Up there? These are 15th in the table. Um, three defeats at the past six for first, but Aston Villa heading into this. Um, the book, the last six between two sides, five wins for Chelsea, one win for Villa. The last time that they played over at Stamford Bridge was a 2-0 win for Chelsea back in 2015. I don't know who, who was in charge back in the day. Uh, I, for, for myself, I think this is going to be a similar scoreline. I'm going to go over the 2-0 win for Chelsea. Moving on to Southampton. We took Southampton. Southampton up against Norwich. Uh, let me just double check that it is the way we go. We are uh, Chelsea, uh, sorry, Southampton against Norwich. They played each other the past um, six seasons. Three wins for Southampton, two wins for Norwich, one draw along the way. The last time they did play each other was um, in this venue, was over in the FA Cup in 2017. Um, it actually was for, a game was going into a replay at Carroll Road, which ends up 2-2. But Southampton ultimately went through back in 2017 with a 1-0 win. The last time they did play each other at the Premier League was back in 2016. Uh, sorry, 2015, and it was a 3 0 win for Southampton. Bookmakers' odds on this one they go with the 3 4 on for Southampton, 17 5 for Norwich, 3 1 the draw. Norwich come into this, they're on the rise at the moment, uh, unbeaten in two, three defeats in the past six. They're 19th at the table, a win for them could see them go as high as 17th. Southampton just one place above them, again, three defeats in the past six, a win for them could see them jump to 15th in the table, and that would be them out of the drop zone comfortably gonna go with a victory myself on this one am i two on win for saints uh, at uh, the den or, or saint mary's should i say uh, in the end first so southampton we keep on moving next up we have a small matter just a small matter of the merseyside derby uh that's right now these two sides do get out of the past six occasions three wins for liverpool three draws along the way zero for everton as they lock horns over at anfield now the last time they did play over at anfield was a one nil win um, but the last time they did lock horns was back in Goodison in March and it was a nil-nil draw. The bookmakers' odds on this one go 38 to 100 for uh, Liverpool, the home win, 50 to 2 for Everton, the away win, 90 to 5. The draw on this sucker. Um, will that happen? I don't know. We'll have to take a look. Uh, a win for Everton, who are probably going to lose their manager. They sit in 17th spot at the moment. A win for them could see them shoot up to 12th. Uh, Liverpool, though, sitting pretty at the top of the table. 14 wins, uh, 14 games, 13 wins, 40 points on the board. Five wins on the spin. There have been some nervy wins. You know what? This could be a draw, you know. I could, I could, I could go with a draw, but I'm going to go big on this one. I'm actually going to go global. Six goals in it, 4-2 win for Liverpool, and that would continue their amazing start to the season and into the month of December with a big fat W. Uh, moving on to Thursday night's games, and it will be Sheffield United up against Newcastle United. Uh, these two sides have duked it out five times over the past uh, 13 years or so. Uh, one win for Sheffield United, three wins for the Toon, uh, one draw along the way. The last time they did play each other at Bramall Lane was a 2-2 draw back in 2015. Uh, the last victory for Sheffield United was back in 2006 at St. James's Park. 
Um, so it looks like Newcastle United are unbeaten in the last three games. In fact, you can say in the last 12 seasons uh, against Sheffield United at Bramall Lane. Um, a win for the for the Sheffield United who start the season in fantastic form in seventh spot. Could see him go as high as fifth. Newcastle line 14th at the moment and a win for them could see him jump to seventh. That's how tight it is in the middle of the park. 10 to 11 on for Sheffield United. 17 to 5. The away win. 23 to 10. The draw. Going to go with, obviously, Sheffield United look good at the moment. 2-1 win in the end. And that would give Sheffield United the point and push uh, Newcastle back into some relegation fodder. Uh, next up, we have Arsenal up against the Brighton Hove Albion. as uh, the final game of the midweek matches. And then we'll lock horns again. We'll go live probably on Friday for uh, for predictions uh, for the next one. Or maybe Thursday. Probably we'll do it late, late Thursday. Uh, so Arsenal gets Brighton the odds 11 to 20 on for Arsenal. So they are red hot favourites at home, despite being managerless. Maybe they'll have a new manager in, 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 uh, installed uh, for this match. Probably not because it's a very, very busy week. 5 to 1 for uh, Brighton away from them, 60 to 5 the draw. Now, the last six t occasions, these two sides have duked it out, going back to 2013. It's been three wins for Arsenal, one win for Brighton, two draws along the way. This match last season was a 1 1 draw. Uh, the last time Brighton picked the victory was back at the Amex. It was a 2 1 win. Um, in 2018, the last time Arsenal won was the same season, I believe. A 2 0 win in the end for the Gooners. A win for Arsenal, who currently find themselves in eighth, could shoot them up to fifth. A win for Brighton, who has 16th spot, could see them jump from 16th all the way up to ninth in the table, potentially leapfrogging Manchester United. For me, though, I'm going to go with what am I going to go with? I'm going to go with a 2 1 win for the Gooners in the end. Now, of course, I'm here on the middle of the ocean or wherever I am in the world. Uh, but be sure to stick around for the next round and make, get your predictions in nice and early down the bottom uh, so I can feature them in the live show when we return for Thursday. Um, but also, um, yeah, get your predictions in nice and early. This is what the table would look like should my predictions come on in. Liverpool would lead the way with 43 points on the board. Manchester, uh, sorry, Leicester City will be in second with 35. Manchester City will be in third and Chelsea in fourth. Spurs will be up to fifth in the table. Wolves sixth and Sheffield United seventh. Down the bottom will be Watford, Norwich and Everton in the drop zone uh, as we head into uh, match day number 16, boys and girls. That's pretty much all I've got for you today, folks. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash that thumbs up. If you're new, smash the subscribe. New videos pretty much every single day on the channel. Well, hopefully, we we'll get back to land. We will uh, be back live for the next round of Premier League predictions probably early next week. In fact, it'll be like about Thursday. We should be back to the normal, normal things. So make sure you stick around on the channel. Make sure you smash the subscribe. We'll let you know when we're going to go live for the next round of the Premier League matches, including the Manchester. Is it the Manchester Derby? I think it could be the Manchester Derby. Uh, we look forward to that and much more right here on the channel. Until then, I'm out of here. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit the subscribe button to keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers related, championship related, Football related. We've got it all covered right under one roof. And while I still have you, please be sure to check out some of the old videos scattered along here. I hope.